And I know some of you don't want to hear me say that word. It's the ugliest word in the English language. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most controversial cartoon episodes ever. But Buster, this isn't like you. I know. But in this episode, we're showing the evils of alcohol. You cannot run from Carnival, because even running is a kind of dance. Oh, you bagged a jumbo jet. <laughs> Do I get to keep it? For this list, we're taking a look at episodes from your favorite television shows that have either been banned, protested, criticized, or all of the above. If you were expecting more South Park and Family Guy than we've included, make sure to check out our individual lists on all the controversies these shows have created. Which episode did you find the most shocking? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. The Littlest Tramp Mighty Mouse The New Adventures In Ralph Bakshi's somewhat bizarre reimagining of the classic 50s TV cartoon rodent, Mighty Mouse engages in his typical behavior of saving the city from various evildoers. Here he comes, that mighty mouse, just like a bolt from the blue, with a heart that's true, fighting evil, fighting crime. That is, until the episode known as The Littlest Tramp, in which he's seen pulling a pink substance from his pocket and snorting it up his nose. I know someone else like that. While the name or the meaning behind this substance is never revealed in the episode, a member of the American Family Association alleged that it was clearly a substitute for cocaine. Now, now, don't get so upset, Mr. Beaver. Nature was just a little slow with your development. Though Bakshi denied this, CBS had the sequence permanently removed from future broadcasts. You've had this coming for a long time. You know, this hurts me more than it does you. Number 19, Man's Best Friend, The Ren and Stimpy Show. Don't you ever let me catch you on my couch. Banned from Nickelodeon for depictions of extreme violence and tobacco usage, this episode was originally created for The Ren and Stimpy Show's second season. Move when your master screams at you! It features a sadistic drill sergeant as the new owner of the deranged animal duo who has an affinity for giving cigars out as rewards for good behavior. It never aired as part of that series and actually only saw airtime as part of the Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon spinoff in 2003. Parents are shocked by the excessive brutality, particularly in the scene where Ren beats the pet owner senseless with a wooden oar, and as a result, the show's creator was fired from production. It's discipline that begets love! Ouch. Number 18. SpongeBob, You're Fired. SpongeBob SquarePants. Hey, Mr. Krabs, what's the good word? Well, actually, SpongeBob, uh, there's two words and they're not very good. You're fired. In this TV special serving as the 11th episode of the animated TV series' ninth season, Mr. Krabs discovers that he can save a nickel more by discharging his prized fry cook. And it turns out that I'll save a whole nickel if I cut your salary. Completely. This means that SpongeBob is forced out of his position and left unemployed. You're fired! Oh! <gasps> No! Not that! Anything but that! So, uh, if you could just hand over your spatula. In an attempt to cheer him up, Patrick introduces his best friend to the joys of not having a job, describing the event as fun employment. Ready for your first day of glorious unemployment? Or, as I like to call it, fun employment? The two then slack off for the rest of the day, ignoring all responsibilities and duties. Though Spongebob eventually realizes what he's doing and starts looking for a job at several fast food joints, the episode's representation of unemployment sparked heavy political debate and pulled into question the real message it was sending to the youths and underprivileged. You're rehired, boy. All right! Now my life has purpose again! Number 17, One Beer. Tiny Toon Adventures. Seriously, today we take a Tiny Toon look at burning issues in a fruitless attempt to win another Emmy. While this segment of the Tiny Toon Adventures episode called Elephant Issues was intended to promote a stance against drinking, the producer's self-awareness of the evils of alcohol certainly missed its mark. All right. Bottoms up. <laughs> Now you! After facing peer pressure to consume beer, Buster, Plucky, and Hampton quickly fall into a downward spiral as they arrive drunk at school, leer at women, steal a cop car, and must face the consequences of driving under the influence. It says, Danger Road Out Ahead. Hmm, 
That's not a very good sign. The graphic and careless behavior of characters designed to be watched by children was declared to be not only inappropriate but irresponsible. Needless to say, this reckless PSA was banned from television for its alcoholic content. I hope the kids got the message. Yeah, drinking's uncool. Number 16, Dial M for Monkey, Barbacore, Dexter's Laboratory. In this early episode of the Cartoon Network series, Monkey is celebrating his birthday with all of his Justice friends at a barbecue they hosted for him. Surprise! After being rudely interrupted by the titular evil alien and his partner Silver Spooner, Monkey is forced to not only save his birthday barbecue, but the whole universe. Oh yeah? We got your feast right here. Get him, boys! Why did this episode get banned in countries like the US, Canada, and UK, you ask? Must have been because of the stereotypical depiction of homosexuals via the Silver Spooner character, right? Judy Garland? <laughs> Nope, although that would make sense. It was actually banned because of a copyright dispute with Marvel and the creators of The Silver Surfer. What do you mean you don't have a choice? There's always a choice. Not always. Number 15, Bleep, Arthur. Here is what's known as the Bleep. Kid shows often deliberately steer away from serious topics, adult themes, or language, but Arthur likes to face them head on, or should we say head first. I told you not to touch it! In the episode titled simply Bleep, our aardvark protagonist introduces audiences to the concept of cursing and censorship. My mother. Now there was a woman who could make an amazing apple buddy. And we're quickly thrown into scenarios involving DW and a naughty word she's not supposed to use. What does mean? <gasps> Whoa, it happened again! You better not let mom and dad hear you say that. The episode clearly was designed to discourage kids from using hurtful words, but the bleeping method employed by Arthur's showrunners actually made the episode feel raunchy instead of educational. DW, are you listening to me? In a Facebook Live interview, executive producer Carol Greenwald revealed that it was the most controversial episode with viewers and received more mailed-in feedback than any other Arthur episode. What did you just say to me? Um, can I have a soda? Number 14, Buffalo Gals, Cow and Chicken. Paired with a segment entitled Cow and Chicken Reclining, this first part of episode seven from season two of the Cartoon Network series following the titular animals garnered such debate and criticism that it was only ever broadcast on TV once. Here's my card, right by any time. While the show's humor has always been unconventional, the sexually suggestive content featured on Buffalo Gals, along with the heavily implied stereotyping of lesbians, where are the Buffalo Gals? led the network to ban the segment and have the episode air with a replacement segment in the future instead. Buffalo Gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Number 13, When You Wish Upon a Weinstein, Family Guy. In a few minutes, you'll become a smart, successful Jewish man. This Fox Network favorite has come under fire more than once for its less than politically correct humor, such as when Chris dated a girl with Down syndrome in season 8, or when the show made light of the Boston Marathon attacks in season 11. In this season 3 episode, though, resident buffoon Peter Griffin squanders his family's rainy day fund, I bought his volcano insurance, then decides the only way to regain his financial stability is to hire a Jewish person. Wait a second, Rosenblatt? Greenstein? So you're saying I need a Jewish guy to handle my money? Peter, not every Jewish person is good with money. Peter's prayers are answered when a Jewish man named Max Weinstein shows up and eventually leads to Peter's attempt to convert Chris to Judaism. He thinks if Chris is Jewish, he'll become smart. Due to its questionable anti-Semitic content, the episode was shelved from broadcast for several years. Several Fox divisions were also sued for the lyrics of the song I Need a Jew that parodied When You Wish Upon a Star. Number 12, Last Horizons, Tailspin. Tailspin was a short-lived spin-off of The Jungle Book that lasted one season. Well, I said I'd find Pandalafo as the last thing I did. And this looks like the last thing I'm gonna do. The Disney cartoon series came under some heat with the temporary ban of this particular episode. In Last Horizons, 
Baloo is welcomed into the legendary city of Panda La with open arms, only to realize that his reception was all a ruse for Emperor Wan Lo to overtake Cape Suzette. This fictitious Asian nation's attack is dangerously reminiscent of Japan's Pearl Harbor attack against the U.S. naval base in 1941. Aside from the World War II reference, the episode also contained various offensive Asian stereotypes, which led to the ban. Number 11. Homer's Phobia – The Simpsons The next episode on our list received pages of critique from network censors. Hi, I'm John. Can I help you with anything? Although the animated sitcom had already touched on gay and lesbian themes in previous episodes, this specific episode was the first to fully focus on them, and thus was both the most praised and criticized. Didn't John seem a little… festive to you? Couldn't agree more. Happy as a clam. He prefers the company of men! Who doesn't? When Homer befriends a shop clerk named John and later figures out that he's gay, the Simpson patriarch begins to adopt homophobic behavior towards him, and develops fears that John's sexuality will influence his son. Bart! Where'd you get that shirt? I don't know. Came out of the closet. Despite a lot of viewers being unimpressed with Homer's character and the presentation of homosexuals in general, the episode received positive critical response for its anti-homophobia message. This is about as tolerant as Dad gets, so you should be flattered. Great! Number 10. Pause. The Boondocks. While this Cartoon Network adaptation of the popular comic strip has never been afraid of controversy and social commentary, this episode of The Boondocks took things to a whole other level. It just so happens Winston Jerome is holding an open casting call for the leading man in his new play, and I'm preparing for my audition. When Huey and Riley's grandfather auditions to star in a new play by acclaimed playwright and spoof of real-life actor Tyler Perry, Winston Jerome, he quickly discovers that his desire for fame comes with a price. Jesus says, the scene would have more impact if you grabbed the Maul Dukes and kissed her deep on the lips. Kiss. Featuring homophobic insinuations about Tyler Perry's sexuality, this episode's criticism of the popular actor and filmmaker was anything but subtle. Since that day, I've searched the world for the sexiest black men alive, and I found them. My shirtless men. Number 9. Rude Removal. Dexter's Laboratory. I hope you like it. Well, what do you think, Dexter? I think it tastes like Little kids swearing is never a good look for a children's cartoon series. Shut up, shut up, shut up! When Dexter comes up with the ingenious idea to separate the rudeness within him and his sister, their clones wreak havoc in their home lives and speak in a way that we've never witnessed the characters speaking before. What up, are we? Beats the out of me! This banned episode ran into trouble with its excessive use of profanity, and despite being censored with beeps, the bad words being said were clearly still decipherable. The characters also depicted various cultural stereotypes, as the nice Dexter and Dee Dee spoke with English accents, I got it! And it's a pip of an idea, too! While the rude clones spoke with a New York City one. Damn! Off! Oh, oh dear. dear! As a result, Rude Removal never actually aired on TV, and was only viewable online over a decade after its production via Adult Swim's YouTube channel. Number 8. All This and Rabbit Stew, Merry Melodies I was gonna check me a While the 40s were part of the golden age of cartoons, the decade was also a time of extreme racism and lack of civil rights for minorities, as evidenced in several cartoons from the era. This includes many of Merry Melodies' war-themed cartoons and, more profoundly, in All This and Rabbit Stew. This one real cartoon short has Bugs Bunny being hunted by one of his would-be adversaries. However, this gun-toting woodsman is no Elmer Fudd. Portrayed as a big-lipped, dim-witted, and craps-crazy buffoon, the offensive caricature was not uncommon, but was still disrespectful and remains insulting today. The shocking depiction of African Americans landed the short on the infamous Censored Eleven list and remains a heartbreaking reminder of America's racist history. Number 7. Blame It on Lisa, The Simpsons oh, Aren't you sweet? Sharing your allowance with a poor Brazilian boy. Don't you know the boys from Brazil are little Hitlers? I saw it in a movie! In this episode of the acclaimed TV sitcom, the Simpson family travels to Brazil to find a missing orphan, 
However, it results in some problematic South American stereotypes, which include Homer getting kidnapped for ransom. My American friend, I'm afraid that this is a kidnapping. Bart being devoured by a rainforest anaconda, and depictions of colorful rat-infested slums. Mom, these are slums. The government just painted them bright colors so the tourists wouldn't be offended. Works for me. Yeah, check out the rats. After this episode aired, the tourist board of Rio de Janeiro planned to sue the show for damaging the city's international image. The Brazilian government was concerned about losing tourism revenue, so the creators issued an official apology to the city of Rio de Janeiro. Number 6. Return of the King – The Boondocks This satirical comedy took a very interesting stance on the famed activist and humanitarian Dr. Martin Luther King. And although the episode addressed many of the country's socio-political issues, there were many viewers who couldn't get past how it was all presented. King amazed the world when on November 2nd, seven days after awaking from a 30-year coma, he showed up to vote in the 2000 presidential election. In Return of the King, Dr. King awakens from a 32-year coma after surviving an assassination attempt and discovers the outcome of his years of civil rights activism. Well, you know, Puffy, like you, I can't stop. I won't stop. I don't even know how to stop. When he takes the stage to deliver a speech, he loses his temper and shouts the N-word more than once. He just said what I think he said. The episode was not received well by civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton, who claimed that it desecrated black historical figures. Number 5. Trapped in the Closet, South Park I'm nothing. I'm a failure in the eyes of the prophet! Ah! Hey! During the height of Tom Cruise's Scientology promotion, South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone decided to take their own stance on the religion's cosmic origins. It's not about the money, it's about the message, right? Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, you don't actually believe this crap, do you? While the animated sitcom has never been the kind of show to shy away from touchy subjects, this episode left Scientologists everywhere utterly speechless. Scientology is just a big fat global scam. Oh, we are gonna sue you! Featuring jabs at Tom Cruise's sexuality, Dad! Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet! And portraying Scientology as a scam, Trapped in the Closet also resulted in the departure of Isaac Hayes as the voice of Chef, who himself was a practicing Scientologist. You can't make fun of Scientology, kid! We are gonna sue your ass and your balls! While there's some dispute whether Hayes made this decision himself or faced external pressure, the episode was controversial enough to actually alter the cast of the show. Oh my god, they killed Chef. You bastards! Number 4. Bugs Bunny Nips the Nips – Merry Melodies Watch up, Doc! Yet another cartoon that was unfortunately a victim of its time. While we've all at one point enjoyed Bugs Bunny's regular shtick, it comes off almost cringeworthy in this short's racist depiction of the Japanese. For instance, one of the soldiers Bugs comes into contact with is drawn as a short man with exaggerated Asian features and is shown wielding a machete while muttering stereotypical gibberish. The bunny also uses racial slurs throughout. Back in the day, this World War II propaganda animated cartoon served to portray Japanese enemy soldiers as lesser and inferior. The only thing it serves as today is an embarrassing reminder of the past. Number 3. Electric Soldier Porygon – Pokemon <laughs> This successful children's program had kids glued to their TV screens thanks to Ash Ketchum and his many Pokemon adventures. But this wasn't necessarily a good thing when Electric Soldier Porygon haired. The strobe light visuals during the scene in which Pikachu delivers his lightning bolt attack caused over 600 children in Japan to experience seizures so severe, most had to be hospitalized. <laughs> the controversy caused Pokemon to take a four-month hiatus, and Japanese television broadcasters to enforce strict guidelines for their programs to ensure a similar event would never be repeated. <laughs> Number 2. Heroes – Beavis and Butthead Whoa, guns are cool. America has tolerated a lot from these nonchalant teenage misfits, but this episode went a bit too far. Hey there, welcome to Bob's Fancy Skeet. You boys 18? Uh, no. After the boys watch a riveting episode of Cops, they illegally obtain guns from the owner of a skeet shooting establishment and haphazardly fire them outdoors. This is cool. 
Uh, push. <laughs> uh, pull. <laughs> One of Butthead's shots hits a commercial airliner and sends it hurtling towards its doom. The band episode was not only criticized for its blatant disregard of firearm safety, but also for the inhumane mocking of the trapped passengers of the demolished aircraft. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 200. South Park Oh god, you guys, really? This again? In this Emmy-nominated episode from South Park's 14th season, the residents of the town are faced with the possibility of attacks for allowing the Prophet Muhammad to appear in person. Ooh, That's tricky. So they devise a plan to keep the image of the holy figure under wraps. A radical Muslim organization soon warned, or threatened depending on who you ask, the series creators about the subplot, which caused Comedy Central to edit mentions of the Prophet in the follow-up episode. When South Park moved to HBO Max in 2020, the episodes 200 and 201 were omitted, along with Super Best Friends and Cartoon Wars, which also depicted the Muslim Prophet. You see? I learned something today. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.